welcome to our training on improving your cyber hygiene. My name is Juliana Cotto and I'm a policy fellow for the Youth and Education Privacy at the Future Privacy Forum. The objectives of this module is to one, connect how privacy, security, and confidentiality apply to your day-to-day -day responsibilities, and two, to understand how to handle data and ensure it is stored securely. As a warm-up exercise, let's first consider what types and how much different student data you collect, use, or share. This includes names, attendance, parent contact info, grades, demographics, and more. This map here shows the number of publicly disclosed cybersecurity-related incidents involving U.S. public schools since 2016. As you can see, the 903 incidents occurred all over the country. So while we're discussing security or ransomware attacks, schools need to understand that it is not a matter of if, but when. The most common reason for an attack is due to human error. This means that with proper training, we can significantly avoid this problem. Another important note is that cyber attacks do not just lead to a loss of data, but they can also lead to physical harm. In 2017, four small school districts were targeted by malicious hackers who use student data to text death threats to parents and students in the hopes of convincing districts to pay a ransom. A great place to start in protecting data is making sure you have a strong password. This may seem a bit simple, but alarmingly, many of us still use passwords that are pretty weak. The very creative Professor Craner created a security blanket that showed the 1,000 most popular passwords from a 2009 breach. As you can see, these passwords include 123456789, I love you, and even password. I think we can all agree those are pretty guessable. But instead of pivoting to a short jumble of nonsensical letters, numbers, or other characters, what's even stronger is a long passphrase. So for example, it would take three sextillion years for a computer to crack the password, alligators are secret dinosaurs, versus 34,000 years for this jumble of nonsense here. So here's how to create a strong passphrase. A passphrase can consist of any string of random words, but it's important that it's meaningful to you. So for instance, it can be a list of stores you go to most frequently from near to far. It's unique to you and it's easy to remember, but not easy for someone else to guess. You wanna avoid passphrases with popular phrases like song lyrics, or that incorporate personal information like your children's names. Here are other examples of strong passphrases. So four random objects on your coffee table, flowers, TV remote, glasses, iPhone, can also be several landmarks you see on your way to work, your favorite dishes at a local restaurant, and then also maybe even your favorite Star Wars characters. Again, you want to create a phrase that is memorable and amuses you. Another important way to increase security is to avoid reusing your passphrase. Understandably, it's quite difficult to remember dozens of passwords for different websites and apps. So we recommend using a password manager. This will store all your passwords and even will change your password for you automatically if there's a breach. We've included a video in the resources with how a password manager works and how to download the password manager LastPass. A third security strategy is to consider using two-factor authentication, or TFA. This goes above just requiring a username and password, but also something else only the user has on them, like a code sent via SMS text to a cell phone. Many bank websites require two-factor authentication, which means you have to enter your username and password and then also a temporary code that has been sent to you via email or text message. Many online services require TFA by default, but for others, it's an option that you must select. So the main benefit to TFA is that if somehow someone was able to access your password, they still will not be able to get into your account. Now let's get into securing devices and connections. And first speaking about school owned devices. Good strategy is to one, see if your school or district has a policy about using the school-owned computers, tablets, or other devices. Ensure you log out of accounts, close the browsers, close the programs whenever you're finished using them. And lastly, make sure that they're password protected, locked, or otherwise secured when they're not in use. Securing devices when it's your own device. 
So again, find out if your school or district has a policy about using your own computers, your own tablets, or your own devices for school purposes. Install an antivirus software before using it on the school network or to access school accounts. Download and install any security updates or patches promptly. Set a password protection to log in, wake, or unlock the device. And again, when not in use, make sure it's password protected, locked, or otherwise secured. Here are also some strategies when using your home internet connection. First, make sure you change the default name of your home Wi-Fi. Make that password unique and strong. Enable network encryption. Turn off network name broadcasting. Keep your router software up to date and make sure you have a good firewall. Over 90% of cyber attacks start with phishing. And this is the practice of sending what seems to be legitimate emails that entice the users to reveal personal information about themselves or click on a link that then installs malicious software. And phishing emails are becoming increasingly sophisticated and difficult to detect. In addition, there are also phishing scams that are related to COVID-19. So prompting the user to click on a link or review a document that's supposed to have information related to coronavirus update for their employment. Another version of phishing emails is extortion emails. So this is when the user is blackmailed to send over typically money or else something embarrassing or harmful will be revealed. Some quick tips on phishing attacks. First, don't click external links from an unknown source or if something's sent out of the blue. Second, it's really important to look at the web addresses or email addresses. Notice that www.paypal.com is much different from www.paypal.com. And lastly, never provide personally identified information over email or through a link from an email. With those strategies and tips, take a look at this scenario that is depicted. What are the potential security problems that you can find here? Be sure to click on the activity and guide key provided in the resource section where we elaborate on the potential security risks here and also provide another scenario. Thank you for joining this training.